the rules of a period film have been completely broken, and that goes for the costume as well. You can define an awful lot through what you look like in film. You look as lovely as ever, Princess Kitty. I'm really excited about looking at a period film that's not done in the same way, that's a non-naturalistic visual feast. In our very first meeting, Joe said we're going to mix 50s couture with 1870s silhouettes. A lot of 50s couture was looking back to a late 19th century style, and the two meshed together really well. That's been very liberating style-wise for all of us. We're paying homage to 1873 and to 1950s. Jacqueline is the most astounding costume designer. She has an absolute understanding of style and period and fabric, but also an understanding of character that is really rare. Anna! <laughs> There's two dresses that have got really 50s bodices. The dress that she wears at the tea room and in the Grand Hotel, and the dress that she wears at the races. It's got an asymmetric fastening like this with buttons and a swoop of taffeta around the neck and then the same 1870s skirt shape. And they differ from the 50s in the sense that they've got a long kind of tail which folds into the bustle so that it accentuates the 1870s shape. It's a real sliding scale with Anna being the most 50s and then it slides away to becoming more and more period with the exception of Betsy who is not at all period. You didn't come to my dinner. In talks with Jacqueline, the costume designer, and we decided that she could be a bit exotic. So I thought geisha was quite an interesting theme to go down. Your husband is a saint, and we must all cherish him for Russia's sake. The first discussions in wardrobe when you're putting any character together is the most rewarding. Jude latched onto the idea that the simpler your costume and the less detail and the less there is on it signifies that you have greater power. He wanted to remove all of the details and have a completely plain tunic. And we played on that idea again with his dressing gown and nightshirt at home. Jacqueline's fantastic because she already has her ideas of the character, but she also likes to know what you think. In my opinion, Karenin is a fool and Anna is the best of us. This little thing for me was something that was quite telling of my character because there is a slightly spiky element to her that represents that. My dear, I'm a sales catalogue. Costume design has been an eye-opening experience for me with Jacqueline. The way they approach costume, there was a huge amount of the character came through the different looks. I'm Countess von Skyer. I've been in St. Petersburg for the christening of a granddaughter. In my character is supposedly aging beauty. I had this idea that She's worried that her neck's looking old. I wanted some sort of collar. And then Jacqueline, she gave me this fantastic creation. Count Vronsky. Yes? These are rich, good-looking cavalry officers. Nothing better to do than make love to pretty women. We gathered together all the images of Russian uniforms that were correct for the date. Joe was very specific about whites. We had to find pure whites rather than creams. Dance with me having me in this black costume and Aaron in this white one entwining hands and everything, it suddenly became this yin and yang thing, which is what makes it so interesting. The more and more stylized it became, the more I thought that the 50s styling fit in. It's great for the film. I think it's another strand in the theatricality of it. We just set off in the boat that takes us through Anna Karenina and we get to the other side and you hope for the best.